Welcome to this episode of The Context. Today I want to talk to you how artificial intelligence assistants are moving from the layer of understanding individual components of the infosphere around them and around us to the semantic layer, understanding the meaning and the implications in a broader context of what uh, is the information and as a consequence, what is potentially the knowledge that uh, we can derive at a higher layer of abstraction. We have many examples of AI assistants that day after day, in an increasing number of situations, are helping so that we can work better, uh, we can communicate better, or that our entertainment choices are better corresponding to our expectations of quality for the time that we are investing in each of these activities. And the AI assistants have become, in many aspects, superhuman in their performance. In the 80s and the 90s, we were trying to build artificial intelligence components with a top-down approach. We would carefully craft rules that put together would resemble the activities and the reasoning of a human expert. However, this approach couldn't scale. On one hand, it was difficult to formalize the judgment of an expert who would uh, too often say, oh, I'm going with my gut, and insisting in the interview process would not necessarily lead to useful increasing number of rules that could be formally described in a program. On the other hand, when it did happen, and we increased the number of rules of our expert systems from a few hundred to thousands, these became extremely difficult to debug and they became brittle and uh, they could not perform even if we added the rules we couldn't predict uh, their behavior already 40 years ago there were neural networks that would carefully change the weights of certain connections between layers of uh, variables so that given a type of input, they could generate a certain output. The simplest example of neural networks is recognizing handwritten digits, where the number four or the number seven or the number eight, as written by several people, may not be very similar, but still we are pretty good in recognizing, yes, that is a four, that is a seven, that is an eight. Computers were not good at all, but neural networks were applied and they, little by little, became pretty good in recognizing handwritten numbers as well, or handwritten letters. However, it appeared that their performance would plateau and they really couldn't go from the simplest applications to more complex applications. Originally, this was formulated uh, in, a, in, a, in an almost joking manner where people would say, well, computers are not even able to tell dogs or cats uh, apart on a photo. As it often the case, what was necessary is an improvement, a real innovation in the mathematical approach of the algorithms that we were applying as implemented in the neural networks. And uh, in 2012, this change uh, occurred. There was uh, a contest for recognizing images based on a database uh, of images that anybody could take and both train and test 
their neural network's performance. And before 2012, this test uh, would, uh, when run uh, on a neural network, pass or fail, but on average would be able to recognize not more than 70-80% of the images. It would fail 20-30% of the time. It is a huge number of failings. The human performance is over 90-95% on the same set of images. When the new algorithms have started to be implemented, neural network performance on image recognition very rapidly achieved and then surpassed human performance. And today we have image recognition and image classification on computers that is literally superhuman. If you are given a thousand images and you are asked, is this a horse? Is this a dog? Is this a bird? Is this a bridge? Is this a tower? The descriptors that you would assign to those images would be wrong 50 out of a thousand. And in the case of computers, it may be half of that or even less than half of that. One of the earliest practical examples of this uh, can be found uh, in uh, the photo uh, sharing platform called Flickr, now owned by Yahoo. On Flickr, and then more recently on Google Photos, there are literally hundreds and now thousands of different categories, and each of your photos is classified automatically across all of those categories. And what that enables you to do is to start typing and say, I want all the photos that uh, have people who are smiling on the beach at sunset out of the photos that I stored on Google Photos, for example. And I am giving you that example because I know that out of the over 200,000 photos that I store on Google Photos, this search gives back two photos of my children uh, during a summer holiday. They are on the beach, smiling at sunset. This is pretty remarkable because previously we would be required to manually label the images and classify them ourselves. Not only uh, you may remember, um, if you do, that we used to take chemical photos and then we would store them in boxes and we would write um, summer vacation 19... 93 or whatever other number of the year but obviously after putting a photo in a given box it could not belong to any other box there was no alternative way of classifying the photos another example is managing your music collection where whether it was mixtapes or cds or whatever we wanted to do we were required to manually um, select what playlist the song would belong to, uh, what mood that uh, uh, represented. And today we have tens of millions of songs in Apple Music or Alexa or other systems. And we can select a mood and automatically a playlist is created that corresponds to that mood uh, of uh, songs that, uh, based on the history of the songs that we listen or we skip, we will like. And of course, Netflix, that has a recommendation algorithm for what is the movie that we should watch next, uh, that is based on our previous, previous ratings uh, of thumbs up or thumbs down, and uh, famously, Netflix um, ran a contest 
where they ask um, the teams of developers from all over the world who could download the data set of ratings and, and matches uh, against uh, anonymous uh, users uh, of, uh, of Netflix to improve the recommendation engine. And uh, the prize was a cool million dollars. And uh, the two top teams uh, joining forces were able to achieve that improvement and uh, take the prize. So these are three uh, examples of uh, AI systems, recommendation engines, classification uh, engines that we use almost every day. And there are many, many others. As the information flow that we either receive or generate increases, we need to increase the ambition of our AI systems. We need to aim for applying a higher level of understanding of the topics that we are covering in order to be able to own the data, to extract knowledge, and to be able to act on it usefully and rapidly. One of the benefits to the supporters on Patreon of the context is that uh, uh, you receive the transcript of the episodes uh, together with the episode as well. And uh, many people um, are, are grateful for that because, of course, uh, you can listen to me uh, for half an hour or so, but uh, if you have the transcript, you can just glance uh, through the text, speed reading or, or stopping here and there with uh, your, your eye, uh, what uh, I'm talking about. And in that case, you will be able probably to get a fair percentage of uh, at least an understanding of what I'm talking about without spending half an hour. And uh, I have had people writing to me saying that they don't have half an hour to dedicate, but they do have the time that uh, they need to uh, glance uh, uh, at the transcript and do it at a much, fa much faster speed. Now, the next step uh, that I am implementing uh, with uh, my uh, content production, which in the meantime has considerably increased, because on top of the weekly context episode, I am now producing uh, four uh, shows that are not necessarily daily, but uh, they are quite frequent, searching for the question live in the European and American editions on one hand and the Asia Pacific edition on the other hand. These are live streams uh, at uh, 7 p.m. CET, which is 1 p.m. New York time and uh, 10 a.m. California time. And then there is an other one, uh, which I just mentioned in a time slot that is more compatible with guests joining the live show uh, from Japan, Korea, China, Australia, New Zealand. And that uh, is live at 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning uh, European time. And then on top of that, I also have an Italian show, Qual è la domanda, uh, that is at uh, 3 p.m. live, and uh, Network Society Ventures Pitching Live, which I mentioned in the previous episode of The Context, which allows startups to meet investors uh, in a kind of a startup pitch competition of one presenting their project and then receiving a barrage of uh, aggressive questions, um, pointedly critiquing uh, the presentation, but also highlighting uh, what the potential of the project is. So if I were to do this uh, amount every day um, and you wanted to follow me, you would have a really hard task of looking at something between 20 and 25 hours 
per week uh, of new material. And even the transcription of these, and, and we are doing them, is a volume that uh, I, I don't wish even the most fervent of my fans to have to go through every time. I do have fans who are extremely dedicated. I have uh, people who um, uh, actually annotate episodes and, and underline and, and highlight and uh, uh, find correlations. And, and these are extremely valuable activities. And that is not what now we are starting to support with additional artificial intelligence components. There are and there have been systems of topic extraction for um, a long time. And these were typically uh, very expensive tools for um, intelligence um, service units or enterprises that had tens of thousands of dollars per month uh, to dedicate to the task. But of course, as it happens, the power of uh, information tools and uh, the digitization of our activities is to democratize over time so that what has been exclusive and very expensive becomes inexpensive and accessible to all. This is the process that is part of the uh, approach that uh, Singularity University and Peter Diamandis uh, have been popularizing for a long time. They talk about six Ds uh, of uh, exponential change. So the democratization of the access of topic extraction tools now means that with no money and a bigger effort or very little money and with much more user-friendly tools, it is possible to start analyzing uh, a given amount of text to highlight correlations, concentration of uh, uh, certain types of topics, the absence of correlations or the absence of certain types of topics, and many, many other queries that can be both um, textually as well as visually analyzed and understood so that very rapidly interesting additional questions can be asked about the corpus that is being analyzed. Now, this is the start of the experience that I am telling you. And if you want to follow the uh, experiment with me, um, you can also check out the tool that I am using it is called Infranodus, I-F-I-N-F-R-A-N-O-D-U-S, Infranodus. And uh, I still haven't built the complete experience in the tool to tell you whether um, the value that I'm going to gain and then, of course, uh, give uh, to all of you um, is going to be huge or um, a, a small amount of, of value. But of course, uh, for me, it is uh, also a question of, of learning and then applying this learning on how a large amount of output, in my case, the video streams, can be automatically transcribed and then automatically analyzed so that the various topics covered can be highlighted and understood. The amount of information that is surrounding us is increasing every day. That is why we need these tools so that we can act on a higher layer of abstraction and we can understand uh, what are the important facts and the important connections between the facts that require our attention and our decision making. These are important, life-saving, world-changing decisions that can be made if the right tools are available. So, 
AI tools are necessary. Without them, we would not be able to act on the amount of information we have. And now these tools are available, not only exclusively to those who can afford them at a very high cost, but they are available to anyone who takes the step of understanding the need, of finding the tool, of implementing it and experimenting with it, and then delivering the value to themselves, their community, and to others, like I am doing and I am showing you as well how to do. As I said, this is just the beginning. I will um, give updates further on on how the experiment uh, with this kind of abstraction layer, AI assistance, decision-making tool uh, is going. And uh, I hope uh, you will also enjoy learning about it and uh, will come with me along the journey. Thank you.